Hi, it's Dr. Lori, and this is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Good to have you with me. And of course, I've got guests who are going to be here. I'm going to do some appraisal and they answer your questions. So type them in. I want to know what's going on. So type them in. I'm going to take your questions. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm the PhD Antiques Appraiser. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I hope you'll do so here. Here's my first guest. Remember, none of these pieces are vetted. I don't know what's coming. Everything is unscripted. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Where are you? What's your first name? Uh, Joan from Nevada. Hi, Joan. Well, what's happening? Hey, Joan, are you in your home office? I am. Yeah. Do you have Do you have what I have under my desk? What do you have under your desk? I always want to know what's under the desk. I have crap under my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I have one of those little exercise bicycles. It's like a little... I, I have bike. one. It's good. It's good. I like it. It kind of keeps your legs moving because you sit so, I don't know if you sit so much. I sit a lot. So I kind of keep your legs moving. So I always like to know what's under the desk. Do you keep <laughs> trash cans? Do you keep like all the old papers that you really don't want to deal with? And what object have you got for me, hon? I have a photograph. Let's see. I know nothing about. Oh boy. Okay. I want to see it and not your face. We've seen your face. I want to see the object. A lot of glare I there. Trying to get the statics. I mean, the. Uh, Looks like two native girls. Is it signed? It is signed. It is, uh, it says Peru 19, let's see, girls slash Peru 1965. It looks like a T or a Jake Carter cartoon. Can I see the whole piece? Let's see the whole piece. People want to see the piece. We love you. We know you're beautiful. Let me see the piece and not you. Can you hide behind the piece? I can, you put, am... can you put your face behind the piece? Then I there can't you go. Where it's going. <laughs> there it is. Now I can see the piece. Can you back up? There you go. All right. All right. So you have a gelatin silver print, which is another term for, of course, a black and white photograph. The piece looks like it's late 1900s, so probably the late 1900s. It's not dated, correct? It's dated 1965. Oh, excellent. Okay, so it's mid-1900s. All right. Mm -hmm. And then you don't know who the artist is. There are a couple of different, there's a lot of different artists who are working in what we call the National Geographic style. So they're taking sort of these travel kind of photos, photos of particular cultures and particular peoples, and they're basically making them into this other type of photographic um, historical realm. Value on the piece is going to range be based on, of course, the photograph, not too much information about the artist because you can't read the signature. Value on the piece is going to range anywhere between $250 and $450 retail based on actual sales records. Thanks very much. A couple Thank of you. things that I want to talk with you about when it comes to photography. First of all, it has to be in the dark. Even more so than regular prints, photographs have to be in the dark. So you want to think about that. I want to know more about the artist and who the artist is. So you really have to watch my video where I teach you actually how to understand what the signature is. And if you have this, you have to take into consideration, I'm doing these, I'm happy to do them, but we have to see your object. So I'm going to take my next guest. Have to see the object. I know it's good to see your face, but if you want to get out of it so I can see the object, that's what's going to be important. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. How are you doing? Hi. Hello, how are you today? I'm fine today. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Jerry from Kentucky. Hi, Jerry. Have you been watching the channel a lot? I've been watching you. Okay, I hope you're learning <laughs> stuff. I'm trying to. I ventured out and bought a Goodwill painting. Okay, can you hold up the painting so we can see the whole piece? There we go. Okay, so if you if you turn the piece to on it, so we can see the side where the canvas comes over the actual stretcher. You see that right there? Okay, so you'll notice that it's an original painting. You can see the brush working. You can see it's a little bit of sloppy, but I like to see that. And you're looking for the nails. How about the back? Let's take a look at the back of this landscape. Pretty traditional, typical landscape. All right, so you've got a nice American stretcher and piece probably dates sometime into the middle part of the 20th century, the mid 1900s. Is it signed? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Franklin. It says Franklin on it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, these names that are pretty typical, you know, Franklin, Nelson, uh, Joan, Smith, those names are typical names that we associate with a lot of pieces that are starving artist paintings or paintings that are made in large numbers, usually in 
Southeast Asia and other parts of the world. And then they're shipped to the United States to be basically just traded or sold. Now, it's a nice landscape. It has a lot of heavy brushwork. People think, oh, a lot of heavy brushwork is what we're looking for. You know, it comes out of impressionism, that idea of having this quick and thick application of paint and quick brushstroke. However, those paintings are really, really a lot of them out there. So you're in the goodwill, right? And you decided I'm going to venture out into some art because art does have a very good return on investment if you buy the right thing. How much did you right. pay for that? Six dollars. When you saw it at the Goodwill, what made you buy it? I just love the texture on the painting and the, the print itself. Okay, so it's not a print. It's an original. Well, I know, painting. but I want you to get the vocabulary right. <laughs> I know you're right. just talking to me and you're saying, oh, Dr. Lori, I didn't mean <laughs> to say that. But it's an original, so it's not printed. No mechanical, no machine is involved. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking about that. And you said you like the texture. Did you like the landscape? Did you like how comfortable it was? Oh, what I mean by it, that is yeah. your mind knows you're going to go up it's just, the screen. Yeah, it's beautiful up the stream and then up into the mountain, it's the peaks mountains. and valleys. And that peaks and valleys, can you hold up the piece so we can see the piece? Over to your left, there you go. So basically you're gonna go up the stream through the middle. This is very typical. And notice the reflection, that's also very important. I want you to read the painting like you would read a book from upper left to lower right. That's why they're usually signed in the lower right. Also, I want you to notice at the top of the tree on the left, there's only a little bit of green. They kind of stop the brush strokes there because they're using more of the attention to the brush strokes in the body of the tree or the bottom portion of the tree. Those two vertical trees act as framers. Every artist does this. They're trying to entice you into moving into the actual work. And this is all visual. And this is to convince you that you're looking at a three-dimensional thing, right? Thank you for the super chats and the super stickers. I'm trying to teach you what to look for. So the composition or how the piece is put together is exactly what we wanna look for. For $6, your piece is worth just about 75. So 75 for a $6 investment is pretty yeah. good. Good for you. If it had yeah, a frame, awesome. we'd, if we had a frame, we would increase value some more. I'm sorry, what were you saying? It, it had a frame on it, but I don't think it was an original frame. It's very poorly crafted. Uh, I took it out, honestly. Okay. <laughs> it was well, ugly. It's up to you. It it's up didn't to you. look like it was any count. It seems work together. It's buckling and. Okay, I understand that, but a frame is always going to protect a piece. Even a lousy frame is going to protect a piece more than no frame. So now right. that you took it off, get it in another frame. Uh, it has on a, the tag that runs around the bottom that says personal preference. And then it also had another name that looks like Trent. Chadwell or that could that be mean? the people that could be the people who are actually distributing it. Sometimes you're seeing distributors or salesmen stickers. Those are the people who are selling it. Thanks my for your time. Was, my daughter, well, she had thought my thanks, yeah. thanks for your time. I'm going to try to get through as many of you as possible. Please don't think me abrupt. I wanted her to get her appraisal and have time for the rest of you. Also, those of you who are there who want to have some questions that they want to ask about these objects or any other objects, please feel free to do so. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for being me with me. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. What's your name? What's your name? Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Maybe you have to turn up the volume. <laughs> We'll see. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. What glassware mark looks like a club in playing cards? It's on all this large scoop for a Hoosier cabinet. Thanks, Dr. Lurie, for all your great info. A lot of the pieces in Hoosier cabinets are actually uh, made by Indiana Glass. There's a lot of different ones. But basically what you're looking at is you want to keep all of those pieces for the Hoosier cabinet together. So you might have, of course, the the sifter for the flower. You might have another container. Want you to keep all that together if you can. And marks for glass and marks for jewelry and a lot of different marks are easily to be researched and found. I just did a whole big thing about marks for jewelry on our website, so you can check there. And while you're on the website, sign up for my newsletter. Don't forget, it's right there. It's subscribe to the newsletter. It's under the thumbs up free tab at drlaurieV.com. Thanks very much for your super chats and your super stickers. Maybe he can get his audio back. We'll check it out. I'm, a, I'm Dr. Lori. I'm the PhD antiques appraiser. I'm going to help you succeed. I'm going to teach you what to look for. And I'm going to show you the real values. And if you're not getting the real values, you're not getting these pieces to the right market. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your first name? And where are you calling from? I'm going to help you find the right market to sell your stuff for top dollar. Hey, Dr. Lori, my name is Tom and I'm calling from Texas. Hey, Tom, how are things in Texas? I got some prints on my on my set tonight from, from Texas. So what's happening with you? You see them right here? You see this, Texas? 
Down yes, here. ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, anyway, uh, my wife here. found, found you a go painting. Ahead, honey. You go ahead. My wife found a painting. Uh, she was pretty excited because it's the first one we found that's actually oil on canvas. Uh, okay. So she used your loop to identify it. Great. We uh, love the loop. Do you love the loop? The loop's helpful, right? Oh, very, very. Yeah. It opens up a whole different world when you're looking at things through the loop. Good. So Good. Uh, she found it. She wasn't sure about buying it. I told her, let's see if we can get them down on the price. They wanted like $30 for it. I got them down to 20 And uh, I, said, I said, let's buy it. Uh, I kind of liked it the longer I stared at it. Uh, it wasn't okay. something that can I see it? Can I see it? Can yes. I see it? So your wife's not available today to talk with me too. Oh yeah, she's here. You're gonna have to put it in front of you, honey. Beautiful beard, gorgeous eyes, but I gotta see the whole piece. Back it up. Back it up. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's good. So we can all see this street scene. Oh, I like it. So right out of the shoot, what do I think? I think European 1950s or the 1970s frame. That's immediately what happens. People go, Dr. Glory, what happens in your brain when you see something? I go, boom, boom, boom. I try to identify quick. So what do we know about the back? Can you show me the back? I want you to be able to learn how to do this. There it is. 1950s European. You see that green gray color? That means that there's a printed area. And then there's also, of course, on the other side, there's also where they went back and they highlighted the pieces. Can I see the front again now? And thank you for your patience with me, sweetheart. <laughs> sure. There we go. I recognize the clock. Have I spoke with your wife before? Yes, ma'am. On a video call, right? Yes, ma'am. Great. Okay. Did, how was the video call? Did it work out for you? It worked out great for her. She was ecstatic. Great. It's a very good gift idea too, I might mention. Your, your painting dates to the 1950s, 1960s. It looks like a European street scene in a frame that's from the 1970s. So the frame's a little bit newer and I'd put $150 on that piece. Okay, all right. Nice, uh, nice to see I you. I have one question. Go. <laughs> do, you think, do you think the painting was done and then shipped to America where it was restretched? No, no. Yeah. I don't think that. I think that the painting was, in fact, using, a, it was an American artist in Europe painting in situ, which means painting on site uh, with okay. American stretchers, with American, in fact, materials. And then the piece was probably purchased there by a suit, by a tourist, and then brought back and framed here. So the frame okay. is from here. The stretchers are from here. But the painting was probably done on site. Okay. In situ, right. you're standing there, and there's your and there's your vista, and you're painting it, not from memory. In situ. All right. Nice great. to see you both. Thank you so much. See you next time. The video calls are a great thing. People really like them. I had a nice testimonial just recently about them, and the reason why is not because they're my video calls. It's be well, that is reason, but it's because it's a great gift idea. You can also get, of course, a list with them, but uh, of what I tell you. But the other thing about the video calls is, if you're shy and you just want to do this privately, you can talk to me and have this information. I'll help you with some other things and answer other questions too. But the video calls are a nice way to get the appraisals. Thank you for your. Of course, um, video, your super chats and your super stickers, you are supporting the channel and supporting your colleagues here on the channel to succeed. The more that you support us, we can make more videos and I can teach you. I'm glad you love the channel, that's why I do it. I'm glad you love the video calls, that's why I do it. And we make it so it's convenient for people and it's, it's at, a, at a number, at a fee that you can afford. So I want everybody to have an opportunity to be able to pick my brain and to be able to ask those questions and to succeed. And that's what I want. I don't want to be the person who's you know basically competing with you, I want you to succeed. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori, how you doing? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm Matthew. How are you? Nice to see you, Matthew. How Thank are things you. good? Pardon? How are things with you? Um, I've had better years. Oh, I'm sorry, Matthew. It's That's been a tough, tough, tough year. It is. I know there are is. days when it I'm is. like, oh, when is this going to end? So I'm sorry to hear that, but maybe I can bring some sunshine. So yes. Tell Dr. Me, where, Lori? Where are you calling Pardon? from? Pardon me? Oh, I'm where? calling from, from Boston, Mass. Okay. 
Okay, Dr. Lori, I just want to say an aside before the appraisal that um, not only do you bring, you know, professional, you know, experience of someone who holds their PhD, but also, you know, like I've said in comments before, you are a entertainer at the same time. That's why I believe that you've been so successful recently in moving forward, even still. And for people who suffer with depression and anxiety, possibly, um, you really... Um, uplift us i feel and i feel like i should be staring at the little green light because that's where the camera is so we should well, get on to the appraisal please you're you're very that's nice matthew please. and i appreciate Thanks, the nice compliments you know i have my blue times too so you know if you're you're a re i'm a real person with, with you know i'm just lucky to have been able to do what i really care about doing so thank you for your nice comments but I, I hope you're feeling better and i hope we are inspiring I have a great team that helps me every day, so I'm a lucky girl. Anyway, so show me what you got, honey. Sure. Um, so I picked this up secondhand, and what it is is oh. okay. I, I have I have lancet arched windows that are nine feet all around the the drawing or living room, so it's very bright and a lot of reflection. But I hope. Well, that it's you... it's not obscuring the image, though. It's not okay. obscuring the object. It looks beautiful. I'm sorry. Yeah, holding it in front of your face yep. is the best way to do it. But we love to okay. see your face. But again, so a gorgeous blue white Canton style dragon yep. vase. Um, may I see just the top a little bit? I don't have to see all the way down. So, okay. And then is there, a, is there a mark on the bottom? The only mark that's on here is. Um, a sticker that reads, or uh, like a type sticker that reads, Made in Canton, China. Oh. That must have been not psychic, but an educated guess, Lori. And I believe that it's a collector's well, sticker. Well, you said I had you said I had three degrees, didn't you? It's true, I mean, I yes. I know it's Canton wear. I mean, um, you know, it's an educated guess. You're funny. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Lori, um, when I'm looking at the dragon's faces, um, I think it's the word, the physiognomy, like of certain time periods, how people's faces were drawn and portrayed. When I look at them, the dragons, it looks to me like something that's 18th century. I mean, I picked it up at a secondhand store for $6. Okay. Um, unfortunately, what, what? because the, the device, what? you can't see the... the the, the glaze and the type of cobalt. Let's um, there are smudges. Let's, let's talk about this a minute, Matthew. One second. Let, let's do one thing at a time. I was talking to one of my nieces and I said, we're going to address one issue at a time. And we're going to, first of all, when you look at the bottom and you see that there is glaze on the bottom of these pieces, they usually are after 1750. There's okay. glaze on the bottom of your particular piece. That puts it in the second half of the 18th century or the 1750s. And I'm gonna use those numbers as opposed to 18th century, 19th century, because that confuses people. 1750 or later, if you've got glaze on it. All right, okay. so you have glaze, so that's the first thing. So we could still be in the 18th century, late 1700s. Next, I want you to show everybody that that scary kind of uh, dragon face that you were showing that you said, okay. I think this looks more 18th century. So many good depictions Just on it. Just one of them, pick one. All right, there's one. There's one right there. Okay, I want you to hold it there for me now, Matthew, so everybody can see this face. This dragon face is pretty indicative of Canton. That's the great port of Canton, China. I want you to also notice that it does look like these terrible, awful kind of monsters that would come out of the sea or come off of the lands. This kind of thing is typically what, right? There's the sea one. Mm -hmm. And this idea of having the sea as well as the land in the same thing is also indicative of the 1700s to the 1800s. Your piece cool. probably dates to about 1850. Okay. I think it's 100 years later than what you might think. However, it's beautiful, and it relates okay. very well to the prints of that time and to paintings of that time and also maps of that time, which depict those creatures. These are the things you have to think about, because I always say, understand art in the whole realm, not just one True. type of, of object or one piece. I want you to think of it in the whole realm, because they all look the same of the same period. Dates to about 1850, value on it about $400. What did you pay? Where did you get it? <laughs> cool. Um, Where did you pay? Where'd you, pay? Where'd you get it? I don't want to give up my secrets, but I got it. It's, I got it at a Savers uh, in. That's okay. Mobile, That's all you have to say. So you got it at a, you got it at a thrift store somewhere yep. in Massachusetts, and you Six paid bucks. how much? Six dollars. Matthew, that's a good day, honey. I'd smile on that day. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Nice Lori. to meet you. Thank you so much. And keep watching. There's a lot here. 
I appreciate oh, I him and I appreciate all of you. If you've got a question, if you've got an object, this is Ask Dr. Lori. And I'm Dr. Lori and I'm going to teach you all as much as I can. Looking forward to a video call tomorrow. Yes, Sarah, I'm looking forward to it too. Um, I do video calls as well. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. That means subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. If you have a comment, I want to hear it. And I will answer as many questions as I can. Your super chats and super and super stickers help to support the channel. That means I can make more videos that are informative, that are going to help you to make money or find beautiful things that you can keep in your own home or tr trade or just don't talk about art, antiques, and collectibles. I'm happy to do all of it. And here's my next guest. Thanks for being with me this afternoon. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you doing? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm Hi. Deborah from Naperville, Illinois. It's about 30 miles west of Chicago. I know Naperville. I have a couple of friends in Naperville, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a wonderful friend who actually helps um, a, people who are suffering with addiction who is out of Naperville. That's fantastic. And he's a great, he's a great guy. His name is Ryan. And I, I really, I'm proud of his work. He's done good work. Anyway, he, you made yeah. me think of it when you said Naperville. Tell yeah. me a little bit about your object. I'm going to ask you to hold it up. And how, what did you get there? Right in front of you is where you're going to have to go. Right in front yeah. of you. We can't see okay. you and the object. Okay, back up a little bit. Yep. Okay. And up, straight up, straight up. There it is. A little okay. higher. So everybody can see it. There yeah. it is. So it looks like it's an album and it looks like it is Rococo Revival. It is a musical album. Oh, okay. So you open it up and it plays music? Yes. You, there's That's a, what? on the back is the winder and it does work. All right. I don't just, wind, don't wind any more than three times, exactly. three times, let yeah. it play, let it run out. And then you wind three more times. Don't overwind. Go ahead. Right. right. So my question is, can we see inside the age? Can you the see inside? inside? Yep. I said um, Rococo revival. So right, the age is 1920s. Right on the back. It yeah. Has the, yeah. Um, it, it's either the person's name or it's the songs that it plays, and it's, well, it's usually the song. It's usually the songs that it plays, and that's a cylindrical music box. So it's a little cylinder, and it twists and turns, and then the teeth actually goes along a comb, and that's how it plays the music. Correct. It's and nice, it, and it holds the pictures yep. in here. Yep. So, and you don't have any no tin types, no Ambrose types, no type, no um type of early photography in there. Okay, you took them all out. They were they were all loose in there. They're all like Valentine's cards and okay. Okay. All different ages. So okay. Um, so your piece is excuse me. So your piece is early 20th century. Okay. And your piece dates to, as I said, no later than 1920s. Okay. And with the music box working condition in nice condition, it's nice. It I would is. say value on that piece is going to be just about thirty dollars. And then right. each individual postcard would be a different appraisal. But postcards and other photographs, early 20th century, are based on famous people, famous places, famous events. And certain cards, of course, are going to be a little different. Hey, they love your glasses. Yeah. And I love you. Go blue for Michigan. And I went to Penn State and they're blue too. Nice That's to see you. Right. Take care. Yeah. Thanks Thank for being you. with me. My pleasure. Thanks so much. So a lot of things you want to think about. Now she took all those objects out of the of the album, and that's fine if that's what she wants to do. But now you have to protect those pieces because they're not in the album any longer. Remember, most of those albums and even albums up to the 1980s will have acidic papers. So they're going to off gas. That's why all those pages are brown in color. They're off gassing the acidity of the papers or of the cardboard. So great. Thanks so much for the super chats and the super stickers. It tells me that you love Ask Dr. Lori. So you could ask me. Here's my next guest. And let's see what they have for an appraisal. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Dr. Lori. Melissa Hi. from Orlando, Florida. Hi, Melissa. And I have got, a, got a good smile. I, I have a say. picture. <laughs> You've got a picture Thank of a Native you. American <laughs> behind me, behind you. Yes. Can I see? Can I see Absolutely. it? All right. And you're going to have to back up and show me the whole piece. I understand if I can't see you, I need to see the object. Oil Rita. on canvas. The picture is four foot by six foot. Okay. Is it signed? And, and can I see the back? Yes, it is signed. Let me move this to the back. It's very textured. Who's it signed by, hon? Netto, N-E-T-T-O. And there we go. How'd you acquire it? 
An ex-boyfriend did not want it any longer. He said an ex-boyfriend did not want it any more, or longer. <laughs> Who's yes, a net? It's not one. It was him. It was him. So, I want you to see it again. I can't I hear her. I cannot find anything about this information. And before oh. I subscribe to like- Who's your camera person? Who's I your wanna... camera person? Because they're terrible. <laughs> Oh, Who's your camera mean. person? We got to keep it on the object, please. That's me. Sorry, I was trying to move the picture again. Okay, well then, then you move back away from the picture if you'd be so kind. Take five steps back away from the picture so I can see the whole object. And let's talk a little bit about this realism in that object. You can see the movement of the actual Native American, and that piece is four by six. So there's a lot of texture to the actual piece. Four by six is a big piece. I need to see a good, clear image. Maybe she can send me a photograph through, through my website of that signature in order to properly evaluate that piece. Got a lot going on there. So when you're holding your cameras, I need you to have the piece in one place and then hold the camera. I'm sorry about that. I'd like to be able to do more for you, but I say you send a, p send a picture to my website. I'll help you there. I got to meet you years ago at an appraisal program in Pennsylvania. It was excellent. We still pick, talk about your programs. Well, Dawn, thank you. I spent many, many years, and I continue to spend many, many years traveling, of course, doing antique appraisals for everybody. Thank you, Lori, always supporting the channel. I appreciate that. And I love to do that. I love to meet everybody. And the programs are a lot of fun. Um, I remember marathon programs way, way back, seven hours of appraisals with uh, folks who, of course, had wonderful times. We've raised money for lots of good causes, everything from churches to cancer research, all kinds of things, big, big convention center events, TV shows, the whole deal. It's been a lot of fun. It's going to be more fun, more fun. And this is fun too. So thanks for being with me. Thanks for sharing the channel. And people who have seen me, I want to hear that you've seen me. I want to hear what you, where you want me to go next. But I want you to be here subscribing to this channel. So ring that bell right now. Ring it. Go to subscribe and ring it. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. What's your name? My name is Susan Hunt. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Hi, Susan. Thanks for being with me. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Lori. My I, pleasure, hon. I just recently started watching you, and I'm so excited. I'm so glad you're excited. Are you sharing the channel? Because I need you to share. I am, I am and I'm subscribed, and I've got a newsletter, and I've been to watch you. I hope it's helpful, but you got to tell your friends. <laughs> you got to tell your friends. Oh, I do. I do. Okay, show me what you got, honey. All right. This All right. is a picture. You can see it's got a little bit of a chip right there on the very mm -hmm. edge. I hope it didn't hurt too much. But it did hurt it some, I'm sure. California. Okay, we got it. So your okay. picture, a couple of things. Your picture dates in the late 60s, early 1970s. Your picture has, of course, that nice embossed fruit pairing. I'm so sorry that it's uh, the chip is right. I'm so sorry that the chip is right on the spout because yeah. that's the first place everybody's going to look on a picture. They're going to look right there on that spout. The other thing is now you're you are revealing, in fact, the interior, the internal portion of the ceramic. I right. just wish it didn't have that oh, value yeah. on it. Without that, about fifty five dollars. Value with that, about thirty five. Okay, yeah. but well, nineteen sixty. American, very nice, and it's still very nice and decorative. What you could do is not use it as a picture, put some dried flowers in it, or just use it for, as my mom would say, it's for nice. It's for nice. Okay. Well, I paid three bucks for it. Oh, good. Very good. You know, it's all right. So there's a rule for you. Three bucks, you're going to, so you pay 10%. If you can try to stick to that, even with the chip, it's worth 35. So. Right. 10% is three bucks. So you can resell it in the right place for about 35. I want you to stay right around there when you're shopping. And you can take me shopping with you too, right? Shop with Dr. Lori, thrift with Dr. Lori. The thing is, um, what you want to do is you want to stay right around there. So doing the video calls with me, you can actually take me shopping. Dr. Lori, we're going to do a video call together and I'm going to go to my favorite store and I want you to show me what I should buy and how much I should pay. And I'll do that too. Oh, we've got guests. We're having fun. Tips on telling if an item is bronze or not. Randy, first tip on bronze. Heavy has to be heavy, right? Solid bronze typically is what you're looking for, right? And I mean heavy, like, oh my gosh, I cannot lift this. The, the personal trainers are going to be angry with me. That's usually bronze. Bronze usually has a medallion from the factory on it, a, a round medallion. Other channels can't tell you this stuff like this. That's why you'll want you to stick here, stay here, and let me teach you what you need to know so you can flip these things for good money. 
Um, but thanks for your question. Yeah, bronze is easy to identify, but you got to make sure that you've got it. What's the hideous 80s art behind you worth? Well, first of all, it's not from the 80s. That's first. These are artist proof by a very well-known Texas artist, and they're kind of worth a lot. So this is why I want to teach you about how you identify fine art. You don't have to love all the art. That's for sure. It, just because it's not your taste doesn't mean that it's not valuable. These prints are about $500 each. So there's your appraisal on the two pieces that are on the, um, on the set tonight. And pieces on my set, objects on my set are, of course, um, loaned here to the set. So I want to thank the artist and, of course, the galleries who are, who are loaning pieces to the set. Hi, this is Dr. Lori, and this is Ask Dr. Lori Live. What's your first name? Well, hello, Lori, or Dr. Lori. I'm so sorry. My name is Samantha. Hi, Samantha. <laughs> so what have you got there? I've got a paperweight. Okay. And it says something on it. It says ca campaign full pill or campaign of 1900 full pill. Full dinner, full dinner pill, pill. it says. Okay. Yes. So this is a campaign where they're trying to raise money, right? Um, actually, I, I think it was a, a presidential in the 1900s. Um, I, oh, I should have. Uh, it's a campaign looked. where they're trying to raise money. Oh, okay. But I, I right? thought it they're was trying for... to raise money in a campaign for the for well, whatever kind of campaign it is. So, at whatever kind of political campaign it is, they're trying to raise money. They want to fill the pail. Okay. Right? This is how they okay. started to have dinners. You have a dinner, and it's, it's you fill the table, and it's a four thousand dollar a plate. This is how it starts. These are, of course, um, these are, of course, um, paperweights. Where'd you get those nice lacy gloves? My gloves aren't <laughs> lacy. Oh, I just wanted to find some super quick. Oh, okay, super quick. So, well, that's a yeah. nice piece. How'd you acquire it? What does it say on the bottom, the underside? Um, it has nothing on the bottom. Nothing on the bottom. So where do you think it was made? Um, I believe it was made in the United States. Made it in says, the United uh, States. It says McKinley in the middle of the bot of the pail. Oh, well, that will help. Then it's obviously a McKinley piece, right? McKinley's yes, yes. assassinated in Buffalo in 1908. And now this particular one would be his presidential campaign to, of course, raise money for President, well, who will be President McKinley. Value on yes. that piece in an election year, about $75. I also okay. appraised the soap that was given out. They used to give out actual soap in the form of a baby for the McKinley campaign. And I appraised okay. one of those, and I've appraised a lot of political collectibles, including a Lincoln campaign button worth $4,000 from his 1864 campaign. So pretty interesting. Value wow. on your piece is pretty nice. I like it. Anywhere in an election year, about $75 to $100. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Lori, and everything Take you do. Care. Oh, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to do it. Thank you for watching the channel and for getting those questions in and for showing me what you got. I should have asked her how much she paid for it and where she got it, but she was off so fast. We were talking about McKinley, but basically presidential election objects and presidential collectibles should be resold if you're a reseller during an election year, usually about a month prior to the actual election. And because elections and campaigns go on for so long, it's a very large window. You can actually market those pieces as much as four months prior because it's like about a year that we're dealing with elections, presidential elections and campaigns. So basically you can actually do it even earlier, like for a longer period of time than just one month back. But that's a nice piece in good condition made in the United States. I've got another guest. Let's see what they've got. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Are you rock climbing? That looks like a rock wall behind you. <laughs> oh, hello. frozen. Hello? Frozen, not frozen? I don't know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's happening? No? No. Sorry. I wanted to know about the rock wall, but, you know, maybe we'll be able to get that person back. So I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm going to teach you about art, antiques, and collectibles, teach you what you've got, what it's really worth. All my values are based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold. So if you hear, oh, no, you can't get that much for it, guess what? You're not working hard enough. You can get these values. I've seen it happen. 
And I'm, I've showed you in my real bargains and oh. some of my other videos how much people are paying. I appraise it. And sometimes people are getting even a little bit more than what I appraised it at. So you got to stick with me so I can teach you how to do it. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm Susan, North Carolina. Hi, Susan. Nice to see you. It's nice seeing you. Susan, honey, I can't make out what you have because it's so close to the camera. Can you back that up a little bit? Yeah. There's a focal length on the camera. Can you turn it? It looks like a figure of an animal of some sort with a it, bow, right? It's a seal. It's a seal. So his head's it was... up, like his head's up, like his nose is up? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go. All right. And what's it made of? Can I see the bottom? It's wood. Be careful. Don't hurt yourself. All right. And how did you acquire it and how much did you pay for it? I was in um, Connecticut with my aunt. Well, that's going to be expensive architect. because I grew up in Connecticut. It's going to be expensive in Connecticut. It, yes. <laughs> I don't normally pay this much. I think it was either $35 or $75. Were you in a thrift store? Were you in like an antique mall? Where were you? It was an antique arch architectural Okay. Bill Architectural place. salvage kind of place. They're fun though. You know, hardware, yeah. and old drawers and stuff, big doors, stained glass windows. They're fun. I like those places. So you paid 35. Did you negotiate it all or no? No. It's Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing against Connecticut, but New England is expensive. This particular piece is pretty nice. It dates to the 1930s. It does look like it is actually pyrography. That means they burn it out as opposed to carving it out. So they burn it out with a pyrography stick and then they actually went over and they probably put some kind of staining or a little bit of polychromed, fancy word for paint, basically. It's pretty big. Is it 18 inches or 20 inches tall? It's 14 by 13 by 10. Oh, so it's pretty significant. I would probably I was, put, oh, go ahead. I was told it was a paper mache mold. Well, the mold might be that. But that piece is not made of paper mache. That piece no. is made of a composite with wood. So think of MDF, medium density fiberboard, where they take the sawdust and they glue it together. It's partially wood, but basically it's more glue with wood. Value on that piece is going to be just about $150. Not bad for 30 bucks or 35 bucks, but a little bit high. You paid a little bit high on that. Yeah. It's nice Thanks, though. Do you Dr. like Corey. it? Do you like huh? it, sweetheart? Do you like it? I love it. That's why I bought it. That's the I, best I thing. And paid so much because I that's normally the only pay a that's few the dollars. best thing. It's still yeah. worth five times what you paid for it. Yeah. I just like you to get it for ten times what you paid for it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah. to see you, Susan. Thanks, so. Dr. Lori. My pleasure, honey. My pleasure. It's so nice to see all of you. Thank you for the super chats and the super stickers. You're supporting the channel. And of course, you're helping us make more videos that will help you. I thank you for super chats and super stickers at any number. I appreciate it. I want you to stay to your budgets too. Hi, Dr. Lori. I have an Erin Beanie Baby. That's a Beanie Baby that is green. She has a little shamrock on her. In the original packaging and a little Irish outfit, you think it could be worth something. Okay, so you have a different one. And yes, I do think Beanie Babies are valuable. There are a lot of characteristics about Beanie Babies. You can read about some of the most valuable ones on my website. I list them for you. Um, you can also look at my videos about Beanie Babies and how they came to be. The website, of course, is there at drlorivee.com. Um, but the other thing about Beanie Babies is certain ones are more valuable, but you have to look at condition and you have to look at a lot of other factors too. Everything from errors to pellets to uh, whether they have stains or odors or are their eyes placed on right? Is their head tilted? All kinds of stuff happens with respect to appraisals of Beanie Babies. I do a lot of them. Erin is one of the more valuable. So good for you. I'll be happy to take a look at that too. Thanks so much for that. I want you to remember that the, if you don't have cases for your Beanie Babies, which I do of course have on my specials and shopping page, and yes, I do get a small compensation when you purchased an item from the specials and shopping page at, of course, drlorivee.com. It's easy to find. But if you're looking for cases or any other kind of storage materials, it's right there. You'll click through shopping page. You'll see the loop. It'll say go shopping now. And then you can click on that. And then there's all the different recommendations I have for storage, display, loops, uh, gem testers, whatever it might be. But if you need, of course, those cases, I want you to think about that to protect things like your Beanie Baby collection, to protect many different things. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm Mandy from Columbus, Ohio. 
Hi, Mandy. So Ohio State, huh, Mandy? OH. <laughs> OH. I went to <laughs> MI. <laughs> so, I, but I went to Michigan, but I have lots of friends in Columbus. What have you got there, hon? How'd you acquire this? Um, a thrift store for five dollars. Okay. Um, okay, so it's a. It looks like it is a um, image of some figures near a tree. Is it an original? Is it? Can we get it out from under that mat? Mandy, you there? Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. That's okay, honey. So, um, is it is it attached in the mat? Is it glued down to the mat? Um, it was taped. It's taped down. Can we see it underneath the mat? Or is it still taped? Can uh, we see it underneath taped. the mat? Okay, it's still taped. So what you have there, is it signed at all? Looks like an early, early 1900s original drawing by an artist who has some training. Artist who has some training. Okay, it's like wood. Is it signed? Yes. Okay, what does it say? Mandy, are you with me? Other side. Mandy, you said it's signed, and you said it looks like it's. Do you, it looks like carved wood? It looks like it's been drawn out of wood. You want to see the back? Yeah, sure. Show me the back. Yeah, no. <laughs> that thing is printed onto a piece, very, very thin piece, and that's been printed in. That piece has been printed in. Value on that piece about forty dollars. How much did you pay for it, Mandy? Five dollars. Yeah, that's a forty dollar piece. I'm not crazy about that. Here's why. There's a couple of things about it. First of all, it shouldn't be in the mat in the first place. It should be directly in a frame. The mat is going to send acidity to it. And what's going to happen is the whole thing's going to dry out and start to, of course, crumble on you. I'd put that in a frame. I get that out of the mat. Shouldn't be taped down either. So nice piece, but about 40 bucks for it on the resale market. I want you to look for quality and I want you to understand how to identify quality. Five bucks is fine. It's not hurting anybody. It's five bucks. But that five bucks can be utilized in a different object and get you more money. So I want you to look for what's most valuable. And the three most valuable types of things are fine art, furniture, precious metals, including jewelry, which is why I tell you fine art is what you should be looking for. Jewelry is what you should be looking for. Other things that do have great collectability, glass, ceramics, right? And of course, collectibles. But if you want to get the big three, I want you to think about those. You're looking forward to our video chat. Yeah, Janelle, I'll be happy to have your video chat. You can all sign up for video chats right at drlaurieV.com. It's very easy to do. Very easy to do. It's drlaurieV.com. You want a video chat? You say, I need to talk to Dr. Lori. I want to just do it quickly and show her a couple of items. I can certainly do that. Here's an example of where I surprised a family with a very big evaluation for this piece that was in their grandmother's home during a video chat. And it's easy, you can do it with FaceTime, you can do it with Facebook Facebook Messenger, you can do it with Skype or Zoom or whatever you want. Doesn't matter to me, Google Duo is popular too. I'm Dr. Lori, what's your first name and where are you calling from? Thanks for being with me. Hi, I'm Ann from Omaha. Hi, Ann. Hi. Omaha, Omaha is really fun. I like the sculptures in Omaha. Downtown Omaha is those big Conestoga wagon sculptures. I've appeared in Omaha many times. I love Nebraska. Oh, that's great. I do too. I grew up here. It's the best. It's the best. It's the best. My I, ankle that I have arthritis in felt great when I was in Omaha. I don't awesome. know why. Maybe it was the heat. Could have been. <laughs> you do well today. Anyway, what's up, hon? I found this at Goodwill. I don't know if it's worth anything, but a little I'm higher. Sure. Little it's higher a for me. In. Painting. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah. I can't tell if it's on linen or silk. It's on silk. It is, okay. I didn't know yeah. if it was on silk. Okay. It's on silk. Can you turn it for me? You bet. And it's on a board. It's the Good. silk attached to this board. Okay, all right. I'm not crazy about anything that's glued down. I don't like glued down. Okay. Yeah. But that I love that I love for a couple of reasons. I'm not crazy about the frame, but at least it's protecting the piece. I understand yeah. that the easiest way for them to do this is to glue it down. Can we see it one more time before you sit? Just so everybody can get another good look. 
I love the animal. I love the cat at the bottom. I love the big peony, the big flower at the top. I like the contrast. The gold backing is very, very typical, of course, of Asian paintings that you'll see in major museums. It's beautiful. That piece dates to the early 1900s. And value on that piece, I'm going to guess it's 36 by 28. Um, good question. I'm going to say yes. Yeah. 36 by 26. I mean, it's pretty good. Three, it's three feet long, yeah. right? Yes, it's definitely three feet. And <sighs> I'd probably, good. I'd probably put it in the realm between 275 on the low and about 350 on the high. I don't like the frame. Okay. Um, I just have one concern and that is the, the paw. Uh, it's not coming in. Uh, What's wrong with the paw? Well, right here, which is not. Oh, it looks like there's loss. Loss, or it's like they redrew it, repainted it. No, sometimes it's sometimes it's loss, and then what happens is as it flakes away, it kind of looks like someone tried to work it. But yeah. I would say I would still say even with that, I'd be in that three hundred dollar range. It's a nice, awesome. nice piece. Okay. Asian piece is very, very popular. I have a couple friends from television who are like, I love Asian stuff, Dr. Lori. I love the, the look of it in our home. Thank you very much, Anne from Omaha. Thank thanks you. for being with me. And thanks all to all of you, of course, for watching the channel and being part of the channel. But a lot of really, really nice pieces. Terrific. And thanks very much for these generous super chats and super stickers. Uh, I love you, Dr. Lori. Better half. Found a five-inch Murano vase. Good. No marks, but it looks like it may be tossed. So gold flakes, much time. Can you find anything like it? Well, just because you can't find anything like it doesn't mean that it's not a great piece. At $25 for a nice small piece of Murano might be a little bit more, but for the really high-end pieces, you're going to have to pay a little more. And Murano glass now, of course, everybody's looking for it. So if you can find it without having a fist fight someplace, you know, it's a great, great find. So I think it's wonderful. Um, if you want to send me a picture, I'll confirm what it is. Uh, Got to see it. And it's easy to do that at drlaurieb.com. You go to find values and then, of course, send a photo. I'm happy to do that and review your objects. But I think that's great. But look for Murano. Look for high-end glass pieces and look for pieces that are the quality. And how do you identify quality? Compare and contrast. And that's what I do with you here on the channel. That's why I, the videos show you about, of course, what's a good piece of glass versus what's a not so good piece of glass. Not every piece of glass is good, remember. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. How are you? Fine, how are you? Good, what's your first name? Where are you calling from? Do you play the guitar? No, my husband does. Oh, all right. I don't know how to play the guitar. I'm good on the harmonica though. Yeah. <laughs> That's about that's about my extent in musical instruments. So what have you got there? What's your name? So I'm Pam. And my question before anything is, do figurines always come on these bases? They could. It depends on the figurine. Okay. Because I see like some come with bases and some don't have the bases. So I just that's didn't a, know. That's a good question. Pam, where are you in the world? I'm in Maine. Okay, so here, that's a good question. At certain times, certain pieces are on bases. They're either on wooden bases or they're on ceramic bases that are sort of also made of the same material as the figurine. Some don't have them at all. Like if you think of a Yadro figurine, doesn't have a base at all. Right. Um, some figurines have sort of a base that's of the same material, like Hummel figurines, which are hand glazed, hand painted earthenware ceramic. They have a base that's part of the actual figurine, Yours happen to have what is typical of Capodimonte or the Italians um, made figurines and they have a wooden base. Wooden bases are popular in the 1940s to the 1960s. That might be another reason you have a wooden base time period, but also the maker. It matters for the maker too. So any marks on your pieces? So I can't find anything. There's a um, spot on the back of this one that... Okay looks like there's something there but i can't make it out and i, okay. I looked up i can't pronounce the name the what is it um g-i-u-s-e-p-p -E -P -P armani but I, that be armani yes but is that porcelain because these don't feel like porcelain okay so there are many different ceramic types or many different pottery types Right. So sometimes you're dealing with porcelain. Sometimes you're dealing with semi vitreous pottery. Sometimes you're dealing with bone china, which has feldspar and bone ash and kaolin. Sometimes you're dealing with, I mean, all different types of ceramics. Then you have resin, which is a fancy word for wax, which is made to look like ceramic. 
Then you have all the different composite plastics also trying to look like ceramic. So it depends. Giuseppe Armani was relatively well known for making, of course, ceramic figures. There are also some that were, of course, replicated or reproduced of his work. Those pieces look like Italian pieces from the 1960s, each one of them worth about $40 to $60 for okay. the tall ones. How much did you pay? Where did you get them? Um, I think I paid a dollar each, and then this this little mean boy. Where did you? Where did you? Don't get that one involved. Oh. Where did you? Where did you pay a dollar each for these? They were in a barn. I had to climb on a chair to get them. Okay, so they're in a barn that's like an estate sale. No, it was just a barn, a big, huge barn where she just sells things that people give her. Oh, okay. So people give her this and she just resells the stuff and she doesn't really and want a lot of money for anything. She donates it to the veterans. Oh, well, that's terrific. There are a lot of those types of thrift stores and stuff going on. Value on from the 1960s or so. Not too bad. I like so them. They're like reproductions. Is that what they are? They're mass produced in large numbers. So are they reproduced? Well, they're not like they're copying something else, which is the term reproduction. That would mean, oh, I'm copying somebody else's work, like a reproduction of a Rembrandt painting. Right. They are in fact produced in large numbers or mass produced. So there's a lot of them. You might have one. Your friends in North Carolina might have one. Your friends in California might have one. Okay. Your friends in Venice might have one. They're all over the place. Okay. That's why value is low. Right. Okay. No, okay. I'm not, I, I was more concerned curious about the bases because I keep finding some things with bases and some things without. I don't know if people add them. Yeah. So now I explain the bases, the bases to you. Do you understand now? Yep. Cool. Yep. Great. That's why I'm here. Nice to see Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure, honey. Bye. Take good care. So those are nice. I mean, but again, when you see mass produced pieces and that's what collectibles are all about. The idea is to have enough of them so everybody could collect them. That's the basic idea. Those figures are figures that are indicative of a style. And there's a style to a lot of these collectibles. You know, you look at a piece and you say, oh, that's a Hummel because you can see the face or the taffy pull elongated yadros. They look a certain way. Those look a certain way too. So that's what you want to be looking at and thinking about when you're when you're starting to identify these pieces and understand these pieces. It was nice to be with all of you. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'll see you next time.